Hello, we are going to talk about a very important feature of the Path Workbench, the array. I've created three bodies because there are three types of array you can use. The first one is a one dimension array, which we will use to make a sort of a linear adaptive operation to mill this part. Sometimes when I'm milling wood, I prefer to engage the whole cutter, but to make straight cuts, not adaptive operation, which makes helix cuts. So I will show you how I do this by making an array and creating sort of a linear adaptive operation. The second type is the polar array and I'm using this when creating round things like a clock or, or decorations with a circular pattern and so on. And the third type of array is a linear two-dimensional array. Here is the body. I've created just one hole and I want to drill many holes equally spaced apart on this piece of material. Of course I could make the array using the part design workbench but I will show you how you can also make the array using the path workbench. So let's get started with the first type of operation, the linear one dimension array. I have this body and I want to mill this cut out but I want to make several passes starting from the outside and moving to the inside. First of all let's create a new job, select the body, click on new job button, select the template if you don't have a template just click OK and set the operation. I already have everything set up, the extensions to zero, the tool, the output and so on. So I'll just click OK. And now moving to the job, I want to select this corner and make a profiling operation. Of course, when I click apply, you can see that actually nothing happens because there's a bug in the profiling operation. I have to go to the depth tab, click on final depth and instead of 15 millimeters, I will enter 15.02. And now if I I click apply you can see the operation is here. If I just try to enter 15.01 it doesn't work. Don't ask me why I don't know but you have to remember that whenever a pocket operation doesn't work you can use this 0.02 hack and 99% of the times it will work. I don't want many layers so I will modify the step down and enter here the value of the cutting height of my tool bit which is 20 millimeters and since the pocket is only 15 millimeters deep it will create just only one pass. But now I want to move this operation. I want to start from here. Let's imagine this is a piece of wood. Of course, here would be a lot of material which I have to cut. So I'll start on the outside and go to the operation, go to the profile, double click it again and set an extra offset of 50 millimeters because the whole body is 100 millimeters and this is its half. So it's 50. If you don't know exactly the dimension, you can anytime go to the part or part design workbench, select the ruler, select this edge, this edge or this face it doesn't matter you will see here 50 millimeters so you know what offset you have to enter for the first profiling operation and now with the profile selected I click on this button which is array and you can see it just created the array here I can double click it you will see I don't have an interface to change the values but I always have the data tab for now the array has a zero number of copies the offset is zero the type by default is linear one dimension which I'll keep for now but let's start changing these values first of all I I want to set the offset. I want for each pass to move one millimeter closer to this edge, which is closer to the origin. So I will have to decrease the X value. I will decrease it by minus one, let's say. No, first let's start with the minus two value. Okay, so now for each repetition, it will move closer to this edge with two millimeters. But I still have to set the number of copies. I could simply calculate, let's say 50 millimeters divided by two millimeters, it's 25 repetitions. And you can see then create it. But when I change the distance, when I change the offset and so on, I have to remember to recalculate this, which sometimes I can forget and can result in bad operations, maybe sometimes even dangerous. So what I want to do is go to the copies field and use a formula, an expression. The first value that I need is the offset of the first profile operation. So I will look in the tree, it's called profile. I will just write profile, select it from the drop down, and I will start typing offset. And you can see it automatically limited the list to just the value that I need offset extra. You can see above the result, which is 50 millimeters, and the warning that unit is discarded, which actually is a good thing now. And I want to divide this value to the offset that I've set in this operation. So I'll just write the divide sign. Uh, I usually enter a lot of spaces to be easier to watch. And I will just type the name of the array, which is simply array, and dot 
offset and then another dot and right x you can see that it actually removed the array dot part because since it's referring to itself you don't need to write it again but you can see the result is negative why because i am using a negative offset on x so what i want to do is transform this value to always be positive i will go to the start of the expression start writing abs which is short for absolute value, type a parenthesis and at the end of the formula I will close the parenthesis and now the result is positive. I can click OK, recompute the object and now you can see it repeats itself as many times as I want. Of course I can go to the profile, change its offset just to make sure it will repeat as many times as it has to. You can see it started farther away and it still ends in the same place. But if I change the offset let's say to 71 and zoom in here, you can actually see now it moves too close to the face that I want to stop. Why? Because by starting this farther away, if we go to the array operation, you can see by modifying the formula, it's a 35.5 result, which it rounds up to 36. It's not what I want, so I will subtract 1 always. And this will result in the following situation. If it rounds up, it will give the correct number minus 1 no matter what and it will stop farther away. If I have a fixed value, let's get back to the 50, you will see that I have one pass missing here. And for this, I will just copy the operation, the profile selected, click on this button, which is the copy, go to the operation and simply set the extra offset to zero. This way, I'm sure that always the last pass is where it should be and I won't have any problems with the dimensions. Let's give it a try. Go to profile, change it to 51 again. And you can see it repeats with a one millimeter offset at the end. Otherwise, if I wouldn't have subtracted minus one in the number of copies, there would have been another line after the last pass that should be here. Why do I use a formula? Well, because this calculated value depends on just these two values the offset on this direction and the extra offset in the profile. If I change one of them, I have to remember to go in all the places, change the values and so on. Using a formula, you can anytime change anything and it will update accordingly no matter what. Of course, I can also modify the array by changing other fields. I haven't used this type of array for now. You can get some pretty interesting results. I'm sure there are a lot of cases where something like this might be needed, especially when making holes. Let's say I have a 45 degrees angle here. I have a board at 45 degrees. I want to shift some holes, but for now, let's just keep the one dimension used. I'll modify just the X. So this is the end for our first part of the array operation, the linear one dimension array. Thank you for watching and see you next time for the next part of the array operation, the polar array.